Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, March 6 to 11. 2022 is being marked as the World Glaucoma Week, a global initiative of the World Glaucoma Association, and is said to be a unique initiative that puts a spotlight on glaucoma as a leading cause of preventable, irreversible blindness worldwide. Now, through a series of engaging worldwide activities, patients, eye care providers, health officials, and the general public uh, contribute to site prevention. In 2020, 2013, it was estimated that there were 64.3 million people aged between 40 uh, and 80 years with glaucoma worldwide, projected to increase to 76 million by the year 2020 and 111.8 million by the year 2040. An estimated 1.2 million adults in Nigeria had glaucoma in 2012. Uh, what exactly is glaucoma? What do we need to know about its prevention and treatment? We're glad to say we have joining us this morning to shed light on this Dr. John Samsidi. He's the chairman of the Nigerian Optometric Association Lagos chapter. Uh, Dr. Samsidi, nice to have you. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All Good right. morning. Well, usually, usually would make a, people would make a lot of, some mistakes between the word optician and optometrist. What, what's the difference, very quickly? Okay, so actually you have the opticians, the optometrists, and the ophthalmologists. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, so um, the optometrists are primary eye care providers, like your eye care physicians, where you have the first point of call for eye care related issues. The ophthalmologists are medical doctors who are surgeons with regards specifically to the eye. The opticians are like your technicians when it comes to like fixing your lenses, basically, and other new areas. So you just try to shed light on those basic right. areas. The other specialties and subspecialties in the eye care industry as well. Fantastic, fantastic. So let's let's look at uh, glaucoma. Um, the stats we, we, we gave out are pretty old stats. Uh, but you were telling me before we came on, on set that we had some updated stats. So what are we looking at as far as the figures in Nigeria are concerned? Wow. Um, you know, when it comes to Nigeria, it's always a... You've just got to be very, very careful, you know. Um, as 2019, that was before the pandemic year, 2020, it was about um, 76 million um, people who were either suspect or were on treatment for glaucoma. Now, this does not capture the... And this is talking about just adults within the range of 40 and 80. We have what we call infantile glaucoma. We have what we call juvenile glaucoma and other forms of glaucoma, you know. And um, so um, this just tells you and it gives you a rough picture of the, the statistics in terms of those that are affected by this condition. Glaucoma, which is the... Um, number two leading cause of blindness and the number one leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world today. And that is why we dedicate a whole week to, you know, um, creating debate forums and trying to raise awareness and sensitization on the need for people to be proactive when it comes to their eye health. So you said as of 2019, 76 million adults That's between the range of 40 and 80. That's in Nigeria? Or globally now, globally. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so let, let, let's get back to the basic. What is glaucoma? Glaucoma, like I said, um, is the leading cause of irreversible blindness. And when I mean irreversible, I mean irreversible. When one is hit with glaucoma, nothing can be done. I normally define glaucoma because I understand that the audience, there are different classes of people. So let me break it down. Assuming um, glaucoma, uh, or the, the eye is like a hundred thousand naira. Let me make it, you know. And that hundred thousand naira, you have an arm robber that goes in and takes fifty thousand naira. Now, um, here we have the EFCC, the police. You try to go rescue that money. The fifty thousand that has been stolen cannot be recovered. What you can do is to make sure you protect the remaining fifty thousand naira. Now that's how deadly glaucoma is. Whatever glaucoma steals cannot be gotten back. So, and the thing is that. One of the crazy forms of glaucoma is called open angle glaucoma, which is actually called the silent thief of sight. It doesn't come with any symptom. That's how bad it is. So you have the closed angle glaucoma. It comes with a lot of pain. It's a medical emergency. So usually when people have that pain, they have to go to the clinic, unless for those who are still crazy and still go on, you know, unorthodox stuff. Now, for the open angle glaucoma, we make a lot of noise about it because 
people never know they have this until 80% of their vision is lost. People usually come for some other things like glasses and other complaints because, one, we do not have that culture in us of regular medical examinations, not to talk of eye care examinations. People don't have that um, at the back of their heart, no. So most times we need to keep on with this advocacy, you know, trying to make them understand. Now, I'm hoping that this week, as we go on different channels to try and, you know, send this message across, you have a percentage of people to who will, you know, go do the right thing. Because like I always say, the doctor is your friend. It's not your enemy. So, um... Sounds like the police is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, but let's, let's just stay with the fundamental now. Okay. What are the causes of glaucoma? And uh, if you want to talk about those who can get it, I mean... Is it limited to a particular set of person in terms of age? Is it a respecter of anyone? Can a baby get glaucoma from birth? Uh, what really causes glaucoma? Glaucoma is primarily hereditary. It's not because you didn't eat well, it's not because you didn't exercise well or sleep well. Those can be contributory, but the primary cause is hereditary, they're hereditary causes. And also, it also affects people of the African race, especially the open angle glaucoma. So anybody who is, as we use the word black, which I don't like, but of African descent, is at risk of having glaucoma. So we all have the risk? We are all at risk, just by being an African. <laughs> the reason is this, people will ask us, why? Um, our melanin pigmentation. Okay. So because of the dense melanin pigmentation, there's the part of the eye inside, it's called the trabecular meshwork. Whenever it is clogged because of the density of the melanin pigmentation, it becomes difficult for the outflow and inflow of the aqueous fluid, which is what causes the buildup of pressure that causes damage to the optic nerve, which is at the back of the eye. Because glaucoma ideally is a group of diseases, neuropathic in nature, that affects the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the second cranial nerve, which is the, um, how will I put it now, like a lifeline when it comes to your eye, because the brain, you know, um, is a huge part of what you, in terms of what you see, what you visualize, because the truth is, um, vision is something you cannot downplay. The reason why we can enjoy our conversation now is because we can see each other, we can appreciate color, we can appreciate depth perception. But once you begin to tamper with those things, it begins to, you, and people become a bit suspicious. So you can see someone who has lost his sight has become suspicious of everything in his environment. They begin to develop other sensory mechanisms like hearing, smelling, to be able to adapt to the changes in the environment. So sight contributes 80% to what we enjoy in nature. So that is why, you know, this topic of glaucoma is something we cannot downplay. Now for the age question, now, predominantly 35 to 80 I say 35 because all statistics say 40. 35 to 80 are usually more at risk. But the truth is, everybody can have glaucoma. Whether it's a baby, that's why we have what we call uh, infantile glaucoma, congenital glaucoma. You have juvenile glaucoma. Glaucoma can, open angle glaucoma can show up in just any age range. We've had cases of six year olds, nine year olds, 12 year olds, 22 year olds losing their vision as a result of glaucoma. So um, um, there's no age that is spared. Like I said, just being an African puts everyone at risk. Not so good news, but the good news is that if there is early intervention, it can be nipped at the board. So early intervention then therefore brings us to the point of uh, um, the symptoms. Um, I mean, I don't know if we're right, but if I hear glaucoma, I think of seeing something white in someone's eye. No. You know. No, so, but, so, so, okay, what, so what that are the could symptoms? be cataract. What, what do you need to That's do? Yes. Yeah, yes. Usually, now there are other forms where you get whiteness, like... Um, um, where the cornea is scarred, um, and leukocoria, and then cataract usually. But the truth is, all these diseases, you cannot just look at someone and make a diagnosis. Most times, they're wrong. It's always good for diagnosis to be done by an eye care provider, an eye care professional, either your optometrist or your ophthalmologist. You can't do that at home because you just see some people, they're in the bus, you say, oh, you have cataract. Oh, you have conjunctivitis. <laughs> no, no, but usually, just like he mentioned, you find out that you have some persons who have some kind of faded, uh, you know, whitish cover, more like uh, you have, uh, how do you call it now? Maybe cataract. Uh, uh, yeah, cataract. And usually you could actually see and say, okay, that's cataract because it looks like a transparent covering. You know, well, you, you could just say you eye. have an eye problem. Go see your eye care <laughs> provider. Because the truth is, once you okay. tell somebody in our uh, Klein, that you have 
cataract. The next thing they are going to do is to get, get breast milk or get urine to put in the eye. Yes, those practices are still Bizarre. prevalent today. Sadly, it's you Bizarre. know, they put olive oil, that's anointing oil, engine oil, all manner of things. Onions, engine oil? Yes. On the eye? Sea water. I mean, just last week, we had to deal with two cases of that. And these people are even enlightened. So you're wondering if people who are university graduates can still go through this deceit. How much more people who are in the rural, suburban areas, what would they be going through? So um, just looking at someone is not enough to make a diagnosis. For instance, that glaucoma diagnosis cannot be done at... At a glance. I, you can't do that. Well, if you're, if you're, you're affected as a person, are there things you can look out for to say, I need to go check myself in? Well, for, like I said, for closed angle glaucoma, yes. Yeah, it comes with sharp pain. Usually, it's a medical emergency. So, because of the pain, vomiting, blood vision, and all that, the person knows he has to do something about it. But for open angle glaucoma, there is no obvious sign or symptom. Now, that is why we are making noise about it. Um, now, I'll use this very old illustration. You know, in those days, for those that lived in the village, um, where there were a lot of rats, ratus, ratus, navigicus, okay? So, you know, when they are sleeping, the rats will go and start eating around the, the, the leg, the feet, and then the person, it will be blowing, will eat it. By the time he wakes up, the damage has been done, but it's when you put your foot on the ground, like, wow! That huge gap. If you've never experienced it, you will never. I have experienced it, so I know during boarding school then, you know. So that's how glaucoma is. It does the damage without, the, without any sign, without any symptom. The only symptoms you can talk about for open angle glaucoma is a gradual loss of vision. But there's no way, most time, for that person to know. Like I said, people come and discover they have open angle glaucoma when they come for other reasons. Maybe they are 40 and above and they have what we call press biopia. They are beginning to have problems with reading things at close range. When they come, and if it's a detailed eye examination, the person is going to, and that's why I use the word detailed eye examination, because I'm not talking about eye screening. I'm talking about detailed, comprehensive eye examinations. I'm making emphasis on that, because most people will tell you, oh, they came to my church to check our eyes. They came to my mosque. To, in fact, now we hear they do what we call compound screening. So they go from house to house, knocking on people's door to do screening. Now that is... Um, due to economic reasons, most of these people have become desperate, so they are looking for ways to collect money from people. That is not a detailed eye examination. In fact, when you see the instruments and the equipment used for eye examination, you know there's no way you can bring that to a church, you can bring it on a long-scale basis and have effective um, treatment. Because there was somebody who went through one of these popular eye screening. He's an elite, about 62. Unfortunately, by the time he got to the clinic, he was already 60%, there was already 60% loss of vision in one eye and about 20% loss in the other eye. And all this while, they've given him a pair of reading glasses and he thinks that he's had his eyes examined. That is why we are making this emphasis. The doctor is your friend. And, you know, even when people talk about the font aspect of it, oh, it's not affordable, it's not this. How cheap is your vision? How expensive is your vision? Because those are the things you want to look at in terms of saying, um, how do I want to pay attention to this? I need to make, you know, time out. I need to scale out these things on a scale of prevalence and say, look, vision is very, very important. So um, if that's the case now, is there a possibility of uh, glaucoma being treated? Yes, it can be managed. It cannot be cured. Treated. Okay, it can, it can be, be cured. Managed. It can be managed. Glaucoma cannot be cured. I make emphasis, it cannot be cured. You cannot reverse it. But like I said, if... 40% of damage has been done. Remember, whenever it steals, you cannot recover what has been stolen because it's an optic nerve. Usually, most nerves cannot be regenerated when it is damaged. So if 40% has been lost, you cannot recover that other 60%. What the doctor or the eye care provider will now have to do is to make sure with either drugs or surgeries or both, they pr preserve what you have left. That's why we said it can be managed, but it cannot be cured. So if anybody comes about touting as of now that he has a cure for glaucoma, now that person needs to be queried. So l let me ask you this one. Now. We, we see a lot of persons who just wake up and suddenly they go blind. W would you say that some of this blindness 
I mean, or most of it, because you say it's a, it's a thief. It comes gradually, and then one day you wake up, you're blind all of a sudden. Not that you were born blind, but yeah. that happens. Yeah. We, 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 we say that that's that. the case. Mm. Yeah, we say that's that's the yes, case of glaucoma. Sometimes, like like I said, glaucoma is the leading cause, which means there are other causes. Okay. Yes. Sometimes it could be a combination of causes. So you could have glaucoma. You could have what you call amaurosis fugas. You could have um, um, ocular hypertension. Um, blindness as a result of diabetic retinopathy, so there are a whole lot of other things. But the emphasis today is on glaucoma. Really, people can wake up and see they've lost their vision as a result of glaucoma. Because remember, it's very, very insidious. It's very, very unassuming. So it comes in, the person doesn't know it's there. So the somebody can have it for 40 years and not know he or she has it. This is the reason. Glaucoma usually damages the peripheral vision before. So it leaves the person what we call tunnel vision. So when the person is looking straight ahead, he still sees. But the truth is, there's a test we use in the clinic. It's called the visual field test, perimetry. So it's a very detailed test. It will tell us how much of the fields have been damaged. Usually it starts from what we call the M fibers to the M fibers and gradually begins to eat in. Now, um, if somebody that tells me, that leads me now to what we call testing. We talked about the screening. Most of the time, what they do in screening is just you know, that chart, the visual acuity chart, which they call the ABC chart. Now, that's a very, very important test, but it's in and of itself is not enough to diagnose glaucoma. You can't diagnose glaucoma using a VA chart. So, the doctor does what we call ophthalmoscopy. That's what we call the direct and indirect method for doing ophthalmoscopy, where the doctor looks into the eye. Sometimes it looks like a torchlight, but it's not a torchlight. It comes in, he's actually looking at the structures to see how well formed it is. Is it nasally cupped? Are the blood vessels arcing normally? Then he measures tonometry, what we call the pressure of the eye. There are different instruments. Right now, we have what we call the gold man, the gold standard. Of course, we have more what we call the air pop for measuring the pressure. The normal pressure in the eye should be between 10 millimeters of mercury and 21 millimeters of mercury. I repeat again, it's between 10 millimeters of mercury and 21 millimeters of mercury. That's the standard for measuring. But now, this measurement varies from individual to individual because there's also another test called the parkimetry test which is a scan that helps us to measure the thinness or the thickness of the cornea the cornea is this transparent film in front of the eye it's actually colorless what you see most of the time is the color from the iris reflecting on it now when they measure the thinness sometimes if the eyes are too thin even 17 millimeters of mercury or 15 millimeters of mercury may be dangerous for that particular individual. Why? Because of the thinness. So there are many factors that come into play. There's also what you call the OCT, the ocular coherence tomogram. I mean, most doctors like it because it's a bit objective and it gives detail in terms of the analysis of the eye to brain relationship. And sometimes it helps you with diagnosis, even prognosis of not just glaucoma, but a lot of eye care related cases okay so these are some of the tests that people need to look out for you know when they go for an eye examination not just testing you for glasses please not just testing you for glasses you want a detailed comprehensive sometimes i always advise once you are 30 years to 35 years insist on having what we call a dilated eye examination what's that it's a long story <laughs> not, not necessarily a long story but um, eye drops are put in the eye, oh. which forces the pupil to open up from 3 millimeters, 2 millimeters to about 10 millimeters. Okay. Now, when that happens, the doctor is, having, is able to have a very good view as to what is happening inside. That's the word dilated. Yes, okay. hence the word dilated. So right. It's cyclopelagic, but right. it's more of dilated All right. eye Interesting. examination. Interesting. The only way that dilated could also apply to the eyes. Yes. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, so, so for, you're saying you can never you know, have no the symptoms enough, you know, especially with the with open and open glaucoma. Angular. So we, we, you're advocating for regular eye checks. Yes. Um, where do people, and when you go for the eye checks, don't just go to check for your reading. Do, uh, if you can, a dilated uh, eye Once test. you are between 30 and 35, insist right. on a dilated eye so, examination. So where can people who do not have the funds, because of course you talked about funding being an issue, uh, where can they go to, to to get tested? Now, beautifully, um, we thank God at least the government facilities to a large extent now. Um, you have a lot of um, them getting into specialization. I mean, as the chairman, I've had to visit some of the eye care institution we have in Lagos State and I find out that they're trying to do, you know, most of them are beginning to be very discontent with status quo. So they're beginning to want to push 
I most of them install the perimeters now so that you can do visual feed perimetry on them. These machines are very, very expensive. So that is why you go to an average private clinic. The truth is nobody's providing funding. Like you said in your morning show, the other man said everything is shutting down, but may your vision not shut down. Amen. <laughs> so, Amen. so, so um, that's why it's not cheap. The truth is it, it comes at a price. Even in the general hospitals, but at least it's um, much more accessible. So you could get in some health centers. I used to work in a health center um, in one of the LCDAs. And even as a single optometrist there, I attended to over 50,000 cases in about five years. I still have my statistics and figures. Now, um, dealings with the government, we're not going to bring that. That's topic for another day, you know. But the truth is, um, people, doctors can only go so far. They can only go so far because... Um, you give your best, and that's what is affecting the medical world today, where you have a lot of people migrating outside the country because they felt, oh, they we're giving our best, we're doing so much, you know, and we're not being appreciated, you know. There's really nothing in terms of budgetary and policy for sustaining the healthcare system. So you have a lot of middle managers, or what we call doctors who have practiced between four years and ten years leaving the country. Now, that's a huge problem because what you now have is an influx of new doctors into the system, which they need training and experience. They need training and experience over time. Mm -hmm. Because for you to have practiced for four years, five years, 20 years, now that's some. That's and some. Can you live without experience. Yes, and then you just, you know, and these guys are very smart. They just come in, offer you, and it's tempting. I'm telling you, when you I, see I some hope of this you, thing, I hope we're not going to lose you to that. <laughs> you, can, you can't Topic promise for another day. <laughs> I'm here and uh, yeah, I mean I love my country. I've had the opportunities, been exposed, but I'm still here, which means there is still hope. There's so many other people who, you know, want to make things right. But you know, there needs to be this cooperation between the private and the public system, this PPP arrangement, because if you leave it for the private, everything is going to go very expensive. If you leave it for the government, things will fall apart. So there needs to be this collaboration where things can really, you know, make things work. Okay. So uh, um, let's, as we coast it down now, um, because we're looking at, I mean, we understand now that you're saying that this is sometimes is not necessary, but doesn't mean that it can't be attributed to some of the practices, maybe not sleeping early, like you have mentioned, but mostly it's hereditary. And because of that, you've also mentioned that there's no cure to this. And uh, one of the things that you have recommended, it's because uh, you're saying that it's genetic, therefore that's need for regular checkup, apart from regular checkup. Are there other practices? Are there other things that one can, um, you know, engage in They've to just even, manage even diets, the entire, even, even. Uh, mm. you know, manage? Because you're saying that at this point it can be managed, can be cured. So what can one behavioral practices apart from medical checkup that could also help? Okay, so now we are talking about the primary or primordial level of intervention now, which is the best level of intervention. But like I said, for glaucoma, it's a little bit beyond that. So um, lifestyle. Lifestyle. There are things that can aggravate, you know, um, the experience if someone has glaucoma. Um, so if someone suddenly becomes diabetic or hypertensive. Now, if, for instance, for high blood pressure, high blood pressure could even speed up the pressure in the eye. You know, there's a direct relationship from studies that have been found out. So when the BP goes up, there's also a tendency for the intraocular pressure. The intraocular pressure now just means the pressure inside the eye intra eye pressure just like you have the high blood or the blood pressure the blood the pressure inside the body now which means if you try to be healthy so we could reduce the mortality or the morbidity rate when it comes to glaucoma so um, we always advocate eat right as usual um, foods high in vitamin a and vitamin c um, you want to go for a lot of dark green vegetables um, I always say, people always say, oh, I have it in my goosey, I have it in my obono. But you know, the way we make our foods here, you know, we boil the nutrients out of them. <laughs> so it's good when these things come whole, you know, fruits, when they come raw as much as possible. That's where you can get the full benefits of the chlorophyll and the greens and the riboflavins, for instance, in the reds. Because, you know, you, fruits have colors. So you have the reds, the greens, the yellows. So the greens, the reds, those things really help with the eye. There is this very important antioxidant. It's called lutein and taxantine, recently discovered, that helps. So it's found in um, 
things like you know carrots but you know how much carrots can you really eat because i'm always very careful when you tell people to go eat something so now somebody hears this now and he goes to buy a basin of carrot they say when well, i eat carrot you go no 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 no, no. we're just saying have a balance of everything More eat right diet. sleep right okay um, um exercise safely now because people who have glaucoma you don't want to go and start doing certain kind of heavy exercises that can aggravate injuries and things like that so you want to, that's why i said exercise safely look for what suits your particular body type because somebody may be into muscle training you may not need that you may just need aerobics and things like that so look for what suits that particular individual but like i said the number one cause of loss of vision in my own um, estimation is ignorance which is what we are trying to bust here now. When people are aware and then they take the needed steps, the necessary steps to, you know, um, mitigate it, we have solved that problem. Because if I know that, look, I need to have a detailed eye examination, which means I need to have a budget, okay? And um, I need to do something about it. So I approach an eye care provider, um, trying to know who the right eye care provider is. That's what we talked about, you know, going to the general hospitals, the health center. There are loads of private. In fact, in Lagos, registered, there are over 400 eye care private providers that do the right okay. thing. Okay, yeah. okay. We have to go. Um, it's been an interesting conversation. And, of course, I'm sure our listeners um, uh, are better informed now about glaucoma, our viewers, rather, are better informed now about glaucoma. John, Dr. John Sabsedi is the chairman of the Nigerian Automatic Association, Association. in Lagos State. And uh, he's been a guest uh, this morning on the first discussion on The Breakfast. Uh, Dr. Sabsedi, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank Many you. thanks for coming. Thank you. We appreciate. What well, I said, we step on the break. Uh, when we return, it'll be time for us to look at our second conversation. Of course, uh, hints that Victor Moses might just be making a return back to the national team. That's the Super Eagles. Stay with us as we have Mighty George join the conversation.